So today I'm going to show you how to build this really simple rig of a gun turret for a spaceship that's always going to track the target here. We've also got a little bit of control for pew 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 for our recoil here. This is um, driving a shape key, so I'll show you how to do that. It's just a really simple setup that uses some parenting and a couple of lock to constraints. So one of the main reasons why we would want to do this with an armature rather than a whole bunch of empties is so that we can just select everything and go Alt G and return everything back to default, as well as keeping all of our animation data attached to a single object rather than a whole different bunch of, of objects. This is very handy when we need to use the same uh, rig or assets in different, different files. You've only got one data block full of the animation rather than several animation data blocks to control a simple animation. Let's get into it. All right, so I've gone through the back catalog or the archives of our system here at CG Cookie, and I found this cool um, spaceship gun turret that I want to rig up. It was originally rigged in an old version of Blender, but I want to rig it using an armature in the current version of Blender. So uh, what am I using now? 2.91. All right, so I also want to show you the process of when someone hands me over a file, it might be a little bit messy and to clean it up and, and stuff like that to try and keep everything nice and tidy. So I have already made a little bit of a start by um, giving some um, collection names here. You can see we just got the background here, which is just the ground plane. Um, the data name doesn't match the um, object name, and that's for any that's for all of the objects. So when we look at our um, turret here, we've got four parts. We've got the footing, which um, doesn't um, which won't move around. It's just going to stick on the on the ground. This part will rotate around on the um, on the z-axis. Actually, let me just parent that quickly. So this one's going to uh, move around like this and then this one is going to rotate around the x-axis up and down to track an aim target That's all the information that I would need to start rigging and then I would go about uh, making everything nice and tidy So let's let's do that. Uh, so I'm going to rename this. This is going to be a master collection And when I do a master collection with a rig I always make it capital letters so that you know that this is the master collection and then I'm going to separate out the rig and the geometry into two separate collection. So I'm going to hit plus, call this one turret underscore rig. Now I don't have a rig yet, but I will shortly. And then add a new one and call this one turret underscore geo. And then I'm going to grab all this geometry, form, and then just drag it into the geometry uh, collection. And while we're here, I'm going to add in uh, an armature. So I don't know why I always jump to front mode to do this, but I do. Um, Armature, single bone. So there we go, we've got a bone there and let's make it visible. So let's go under the viewport display. I'm gonna turn on the wire so you can see through and then in front as well. And let's just turn on the bone name. So I'll move to the armature tab, the viewport display, turn on names and actives. So now you can see everything that's going on. Oh wow, this is a really big gun. So it's like, what is that? One, two, three, four, five, six seven and a half meters tall. So that must be for a spaceship. Okay, so let's name this uh, armature. So I'm gonna drag it into our rig collection there. And let's name this one turret underscore rig. Now, one thing about me, I always like to keep the data name in sync with the object name. Now I usually use Python to do this. So um, I won't give you a Python tutorial, but I'll I wanna show you the process that I do, which makes things uh, a little bit quicker. So I'm going to just create a new Python script here. So I'm gonna say this rename data.py and I actually already have this saved out so I just drag it into a new file when I need to use this but it's really really easy import bpy that's going to start our blender python module then I'm going to create a variable and I'm going to call it cell for selection so bpy whoops bpy dot context dot selected objects this is going to create a list of all the selected objects and then I'm going to do something to that list I'm going to say for item in my list name which is selection on each item the data name data dot name to equal the name of the object the i dot name and then i'll make sure i just select everything that i want to rename and hit actually i'll expand this so you can see and then i'll hit the play button up here and you can see it's renamed everything to to match so then I would normally just, I have this saved out, so I can just drag it into a file when I need it and then just uh, delete it. So boom. So sorry I can't teach you Python, but that's something that I would do in my regular workflow. All right, so let's get about 
uh, building this armature. So the bone here, I'm going to rename this one straight away. I'm going to call it root. It's going to be a control, so we are going to give it a capital letter. Let's grab our tail here. Just drag it along here. I want to turn the snapping on so it snaps to, yeah, four meters. Yep, that's that's okay. So it's, it's going to encompass that whole um, area. So that is good. Now let's uh, think about what parts that we want. So this bit doesn't move, so that's okay. That can go with the root. And this bit does move, so we're going to get a bone for that part. Go back to armature. And because uh, the pivot point can be at the same spot, so that's, that's really handy. I'm just going to duplicate this and then scale it down. Oops, so make sure I scale. If I scale around the active element, it's going to scale towards the head of the bone. So that's good. So let's just shrink this down to 25%. So it's going to be one meter long. Actually, that's, let's make it two meters long. That's good enough. Let's give it a name. Now it's going to be called base and it's not going to have a capital letter because it uh, isn't going to be a control. Okay, so that's the control for the, the base spinning around. Now the next thing I need a control for is this, um, this guy here to spin this way and this way. So it's meant to be an arrow, but I'm drawing with my mouse. Let me undo that. So how do I get the pivot point there? Ah, oh, look, this model already has the pivot point there. So that is good. So I'm going to snap my cursor. Shift S, snap cursor to selection. Jump back into my armature and then just duplicate this base bone, Shift D. And I can snap my selection to cursor. Whoops. Selection to cursor without the offset. So I just chose uh, selection to cursor. So there we go. That has snapped it there. Let's name it. Let's call this one um, body. It's the body of the of the gun. Now I've kept all these bones uh, aligned with the world. So the only one that we might actually control would be the root. So it's always nice when it's aligned with the world. This one, we don't really need it to be aligned with the world, but it's nice just to be consistent. Okay, the next thing we need is a name control. So I'm just going to duplicate this, whoops, and drag it out here. Now, how far away do we want it to be? Somewhere around there is fine. And I'm just gonna make this nice tidy numbers. So let's make this negative 26 and make this one, whoops, I meant to say 26, not 36, negative 26, and this one negative 24. So, uh, that is the position of our aim control. This one is going to be a control, so I'm going to give it a capital letter to start with. Now, let's do some parenting. So I'm going to jump into object mode. Now, I can just do straight parenting. I don't need an armature modifier because there's going to be no deformation on this um, rig. It's just basically following along with the bones. So this uh, base or the footing, I'm going to parent straight to the root bone. I'm going to select my, um, the, the footing and then shift select the armature, jump into pose mode, make sure that we have that one bone selected and then parent with control P, then choose the bone option. Okay, that's good. Let's do the next part. Uh, this part, which is our base, I'm going to parent that to the base here. So still have that object selected and this bone called base, parent to the bone. And one more to go. Uh, this one is going to be parented to this bone here. So make sure, oops, oops, I just start that again. Control P, bone. And this guy is actually already parented um, to this mesh. Now, do I want to um, keep it like that? Or do I want to give it its own control? Actually, maybe I want to give it its own control. Ah, oh, okay, look at this. They've given me a mesh that has a shape key for this. Now, do I want to drive this shape key? Actually, yes, I do, because I'm going to show you. Let me show you some cool stuff. So that means I actually need to just create another control for for this, and we're going to control it um, using a shape key, which is great. So jump back into edit mode. Um, this body bone I'm going to duplicate, and let's just put it over here, somewhere near the end of our um, control, and let's just move it up a little bit. So this one I'm going to call uh, recoil. That'll be a good name. Just looking at where it is you know what i can <laughs> you don't need to do this but i'm looking at this crazy 6.3 number and i'm just going to make that 6.5 and do the same thing here 6.5 just looks a little bit nicer to my eyeballs All right, so now we're going to do some parenting let's parent that recoil bone to the body bone control p 
keep offset. So now when this one moves, yep, that's good. That's all following along. And our root control is going to move the base or the, the footing, and this one moves the base. So we still need to parent everything together. I think everything should be parented to the root. So let me select that and go into edit mode. So I've just parented the body to the root, and I'll parent the aim to the root as well. Control P, keep offset. And I'm doing this one last because sometimes it's pretty difficult to select through. So Control P. So now everything is parented to, uh, to our root bone there. Now, I also don't think I need um, things to move on three axes. So I'm not worried about quaternion rotations. I'm going to change that to be um, Euler. So I've selected all my bones and then hold down the Alt key and change it to be, oops, X, Y, Z, Euler. And now they're all Euler. We've only got three channels to, to deal with. But with this one, I'm actually going to lock some channels and stuff. Okay, so we're ready to do our constraints. So the first one I'm going to start with is this base. I want it to track towards this target, but not on all three axes. So first of all, select this um, the aim control and select this one here. Actually, my root's going to get in the way. So I'm going to move the root to this bone layer here. Just hit M for that. Let's try this again. So I select my aim, then the base, control shift C, and add in a locked track constraint. So this is good. You see this is flipping around already, um, which is not what we want. We want that to track towards the uh, negative Y direction. So that's good. Um, and we want it to spin around the axis that is pointing up, which is Z. And that's already the case. So that's good. So if we move this around, it should work properly. Ah, okay, our parenting is a little bit wrong. And that is this one here. I'll fix that in, in a second. So this guy, we're going to do this a similar thing. We're going to track to here, but we're going to lock it so it only goes on one axis. So Control shift c choose uh, the locked track. And we want it to be tracking towards the negative y, which is good. And then we want our free axis, or the locked axis, to be the, uh, the one that's pointing towards us, which is the x-axis. So if we change it like that, now when we move this around, it's going to follow up and down. Now, why doesn't it go to the left and right when the base does? Well, we can fix that with parenting, right? So here, the body, if we parent it to the base, that's going to follow the twisting. So jump back into edit mode, parent the body to the base, control P, keep offset, back into pose mode, and you can see, haha, we have now have a working uh, working rig. So this is, this is all you need to, to make it work, but I'm going to do a little bit more to make it fancy. So uh, reset everything. Let's get the... Um, uh, the recoil happening. So what I want to do is um, I want to lock everything. Let's just lock everything and the scales. And I only want it to move on the y-axis so that I'm going to unlock the y-axis. But now I can only grab this and move it forward and back. Okay, and now how far does this go? I'm going to drag this up to one and then see how far that goes. It's gone two meters, I think. So if I drag this, you see it's gone two meters. Yep. Okay. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to drive this shape based on the movement. So when it goes two meters, I'm going to drive this um, this recall shape. But let's also add some limiting constraints to this. So I'm going to go uh, add bone constraint, limit the location. So it's going to limit the location from itself. Now I've already locked everything, so I only need to worry about the um, the Y location. So I'm going to add a minimum and a maximum to the Y. I don't want it to go um, past zero in the neg in the Y, but I do want it to go up to positive two. Now I uh, want that to be local space, so let's choose local space, and also effect transform, so we can't drag it past there. So now you notice that we're we're limiting this between here and here, which is what we want. Undo those little drawings there. So now I'm just going to um, connect that to drive this shape here. So how do we do that? I'm going to right click in here say copy as new driver and select our barrel here, go over to the data tab and then this recoil, I'm gonna say paste driver. Now you'll notice it's jumped back here, but if I move this, it's, uh, it's now working. But I kind of want it to um, match the speed, so uh, it'd be nice if it matched the distance. Whoops, let me undo that movement, I didn't mean to do that. So the way we do that, I'm just gonna split my window and change it to be the driver's window there. Uh, so 
feed. So I don't know what that is. I just zoom my view a little better and expand this. This is the one that I was expecting to see here. I'm going to bring up our curve here, go to the modifiers. I'm going to add a modifier, which is going to take over all of our um, settings here. Now it's going twice as fast as that I, that I want. So I want to lower the slope. But if I select here and then go 0 0.5, that's going to lower the slope here. I don't, I really don't know what this seed is. Oh, maybe it, I know what it is. It's something that was from the original course when this, um, when this model was made. So I don't think we need it. I'm just going to hide it for now. So it stops distracting me from what I was doing, which was checking the recoil control. Let's grab it. So when I move it forward, bang, you notice it's, it's uh, matching exactly now. Awesome. So I can close this window. It's uh, in my way. And I'm going to put things onto layers. So anything that is not going to be controlled, so that is the base and the body, I'm going to move that to another layer. I'm going to move it over here, which is always my mechanism layer. So the helper bones, they're not controls. I don't, I don't need them. I just have these two layers here. That is uh, all I need. Now I'm going to add some bone shapes. Rig tools, let's make this one a root. So let's go create. And I'm going to make this one bigger. So let's go global size. That looks good. The recoil, uh, what I'm going to choose here. I don't have something that makes sense, but I'm going to start with the plane. Choose create. Rotate it on the Y. Yep. On the Y, 90 degrees. Shrink it down. Shrink it down to 0.5. Oh, no, keep going. Shrink it down to 0.2. Slide it along 0.2. Now I'm going to edit this shape. So boom. I'm going to turn this into an arrow. A scale on the Y. Add in another couple of loops. Boom. Let's scale this on the Z. Right now you're thinking, what the hell is he doing? But I do know how this is going to work. So I want to snap to the vertices now. Boom. Actually, I don't need this one. You're getting deleted. Delete that guy. That's an arrow. Boom. That's my arrow. And this guy. I'm just going to make this one a sphere. So let's just choose a sphere. And go create. Uh, this is way too small. So let's go scale of one. Reset the slide and scale this up. Uh, do we want this one to be maybe five? That's looking good. Let me just check this control. Yep, still works. All right, so let's do a little bit of tidy up here. I'm gonna turn off my, my names and my layers and let's give these some uh, groups. So bone groups, I'm gonna use uh, three groups just to get three colors. Let's go. Red, uh, yellow, and oh, I want this one. What's another good one? Blue. Red, yellow, blue. The so red, select this one, go assign. So now it's part of that group, and make sure that we change the color to red. That's good. This one, I want to be part of the blue. So let's select this, change it to blue, and assign. And this guy, I'm going to be part of the yellow. So choose yellow and assign. So there we go. We've got a working rig. Um, if we want those shapes to be turned off, let's just hide them. Da, 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 da. We have our finished rig. And if we want it to shoot, pew, 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 pew. There we go. You have built a turret rig. So one last thing that I want to show you how to do, and that is if you want the um, the control here to always track towards our target, I've just gone ahead and changed our control here so just to make it more like a, 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 an aim control. Then we need to do a little bit of a setup. And I think it's it's worth me showing you how to do that because it's a, it's a fun, cool little uh, visual trick. So I've gone ahead and already changed the um, the shape here, but I want it to track towards our our body bone here, this guy, but because this one is tracking towards this guy, it's not going to work. It's going to create a dependency cycle. Actually, I'll just show you what I mean. So I'm just going to go over to my constraints. Let's add a constraint to this guy and let's just choose damped track. 
So now you think, ah, oh, this is great. It can move anywhere and track wherever you want. Uh, and it does kind of work, but if we happen to reset by hitting like control G, you notice that our, there's a little bit of a, a lag on our um, controls here. And that is a dependency cycle. That is because this bone is trying to track towards this direction. And then this bone is trying to track towards this direction. And it gives a dependency cycle loop. So how do we fix that? Really, really easy. I'm going to jump into edit mode. I'm going to duplicate this bone, shift D, and then shrink it down. Oops, shrink it down to um, half the size, just so I can see it, so 0.5. Let's rename this. I'll turn my names back on. So names, so you can see this is the aim control, and this is the aim. I'm going to call this one aim underscore MCH for mechanism. Uh, now, when I duplicated it, it's added the same shapes and it's put it in the same group. So I'm going to um, disable that. So see how I've got two shapes here. I don't need that. I'm going to remove it from that group so it's no longer yellow. And I'm going to remove the shape. So where is that? Viewport display. Let's remove the custom shape so it's just like a normal bone. And now this guy has the constraint on it and he is targeting um, the body bone. If I remove the constraint from, uh, from our control aim, and then parent these two together. So make sure that we get the mechanism bone and then select the aim bone, our master bone, and parent those together. So control P, choose offset. So all I did there was parent the mechanism bone. So it's a child of the aim bone. Let's just have a look at it now. So you can see our little aim bone is tracking towards the target, but our main aim bone isn't. So all you need to do is override the transforms. So let's select in here, choose the aim mechanism. Now you notice that it will display like it is tracking towards that. But if we clear, you'll notice that there's no dependency cycle now. So that's a little bit of a, of a, of a workaround to get that working. Okay, and all I need to do is let's just move that to a mechanism layer. And I can turn those ones off because I don't need to see them. There we go. And now we have a, the aim control tracking towards our target and the target tracking towards our aim control. So that is the magic of the override transforms.